Hi, it's Ryan from Nights Around a Table, and boy howdy am I excited today because the good people over at Asmodee Canada have furnished me with a copy of Dice Forge Rebel Lion. Sorry, that's Rebellion, which is the expansion, of course, to Dice Forge, and I have a video that I, I shot a, a few months ago of me unboxing this thing, and I was so jazzed because if you watch any of my videos, you know that I'm a bit of an art snob, and this game just just fits right in the pocket of what I love. It's a it's a stylistic rendering, so it's not a realistic thing. It's more cartoony, and it's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It just pops like crazy. And the gimmick of Dice Forge, you may know, is that it comes with these customizable dice. So you're able to actually buy dice faces and pop the face off like that, and then pop another face on, and then roll it and hope you get something better than the faces that you began with on the die. Neat, very, very cool. Uh, the unfortunate thing about Dice Forge though, and, and what I'd heard about it bore out, is that Dice Forge is like having a very good looking prom date. So it's a person who looks amazing on your arm, you don't really want to have conversations with people with that person because the moment that person opens their mouth, it's like, no, you're you're just here for the eye candy. It's it's uh, it's a pleasant game. It's a reasonable way to spend the time. It's not especially deep, is all that I'm saying. Um, but we we put it on the table a, a number of times since I unboxed it actually, and have had a good time with it. It's just not really a, it's not really a thinking person's game, I wouldn't say. So I held out great hope that when the expansion finally came to light, it might add a little bit of that depth uh, or complexity or thinkiness that I was hoping for and looking for from the game. I have no idea if it does that. I was just really excited to get my hands on it. And as you can tell, I'm still pretty excited. Dice Forge Rebellion. Uh, let's unbox it and see uh, what they've uh, added to the game. The game promises a number of different modules. And one of the things, I don't know if I disliked about the original game was that there are a number of cards that you can put around the the islands uh, in the game and you can choose which cards to use and which cards not to use so it's kind of like a, if you've ever played Dominion you, you, they come with more cards than you actually need to play a game and you decide which ones are in and which ones are out um, it's it's okay I almost prefer a game to prescribe the experience for me so it's the same reason that I wasn't really big on Santorini because it said oh here's a big pile of god powers and you pick which god powers you want to play with I'm like no you're the designer you pick. <laughs> I mean, I'm not making the game. Uh, you go for it. Um, so what I gather from the expansion is at the back talks about different modules. So we'll see how modular it really is. Mmm, smooth like butter. Box fartometer. Zero. Greetings, mortal. Oh, I didn't expect this. A, a very thick... Oh, I see. Okay. Due to translations, there's a thick couple of uh, booklets off the top. So I'm going to toss out the French one. Just take a look at the English one. Uh, ads for other Libelud. I don't know how to pronounce the, the publisher's name. Uh, Libelud? Uh, Libelud? I'm not too sure, but... This is the instruction booklet. It clocks in at 19 pages, and it's about as, I mean, the instruction booklet for the original was a little bit hairy, I gotta say. Tons of tiny little icons everywhere, and it looks really overwhelming for what really isn't that much of a complicated game. And again, we have a, a similar thing going on with this instruction booklet. Lots of little icons, but really all it means is you roll yellow, you get money, um, kind of thing. Put that aside for now. We have new little punch boards, and it looks like there's a new currency in the game. In the original game, there are three currencies, I believe, sunstones, moonstones, and money, and this looks like it adds a fourth, I'm guessing, a fourth currency that is rock candy. I don't know. I don't know. Interesting, and it's, is this a, a new first player token, or is this a kind of a spooky looking character on there, and a bunch of little tokens representing the characters we've already been playing, and it looks like each character is represented by a cool little robot golem thing. 
Neat. That's neat. I don't know what any of these tokens mean, of course. Uh, and hell, oh, right, I read a little bit on the back of the box about some sort of maze. So it brought to mind the card in the original game where you, you run out of money, sorry, you max out your money really quickly in the original game. So there's one card that you can buy that's a whole separate money tracker so that when you go overboard on your money, uh, instead of losing it, because you can't, if, you, if you're, if your marker goes to the end and you earn more money than that, that's it, it's wasted. So it's a way to not waste your money. You actually track your money on the separate little card and then turn it into points at the end. So it reminded me of that. So this looks like uh, maybe a similar thing, a little maze where you go through and you get little perks depending on where you push your, your token. Neato. <laughs> this is cool. I was m mystified by the original game that it had an elastic band and I didn't know what was going on. So this is the elastic band to keep this little sheath together. And these are new... Oh, okay. They're not in there yet. <laughs> I was like, new nothing. These will... These recesses will hold the new die faces which are in this bag. We'll take a look in a sec. So I'll close that up and put it to the side. There is, this is interesting, There's, there are no other actual dice, I guess you, you know, we're going to rely on the ones that shipped with the original game, but there is this one die that is not customizable, it is hard-coded, I guess you would say, with the items already on it, so 5 points and 12 money and a few other things. Looks, I mean, looks like a valuable die, maybe there's a card that lets you obtain that and roll it on your turn, that's what I'm guessing. Um, more little cubes representing the four players. I really like the colors they picked for this game. They're really slick. The black looks cool. They didn't just go for like a navy blue. They went for a beautiful light aquamarine blue. Nice orange. The green is beautiful. Really nice. Really nice aesthetics. Um, cards. If I were to guess, around about 50,000 in each deck. Uh, let's crack them open and see. Uh, you know what? No, no, I'm excited to see the new faces. That's what I'm going to look at first. So cards go over here. New faces. Let's take a look. Using the power of my teeth. Cool. So new icons that I don't recognize. Oh, these kind of, these ones look like the pigs a little bit. The pigs in the original game allowed you to, if you rolled them, steal the effects of other people's dice, which are cool. So these are reminiscent of those. No idea if that's the same same shtick. These look like an either or thing. There's another either or face from the original game, so I'm not too sure. They're probably not reusing the mechanic. I'm just reading the uh, the symbols incorrectly. Oh, but no. But this looks like one of those either or faces. So if you roll a die and it has money on it, then you've matched the yellow, so you get what's listed here. Otherwise, you get what's listed here. Uh, so we've seen that before. I am going to time skip the video and take a quick look at the instructions so I can tell what these are. One moment. After careful deliberation, I have no idea. <laughs> It's not something we're going to sit and just absorb. There is a, a heck of a lot more going on in the instruction manual than I expected there to be. I can't explain to you what these dice faces do, but that's what my how to play videos are for. And I'm definitely going to rush this towards a how to play feature. Ah, uh, let's get rid of this and crack open some cards. It's a weird channel. Must be a weird channel to watch, right? I got how to play videos where it's like, I'm the most knowledgeable dude about this game. And then I've got unboxing videos where it's like, I have no idea what's going on. Kind of a mixed message in the brand. Okay. <laughs> Scrumptious plastic. You got a fragment in there. Hmm. The patoo. Here we are. A spooky eyeball critter. There are two modules apparently, goddesses and titans. And all the dark blue stuff like you see on the front of the box is titan stuff. And the lighter stuff is goddess stuff. There's some natty looking monsters in here. I love this artwork. Gorgeous. Gorgeous artwork. Let's here, shout out to the artist. Who is the artist on this? Art director Jeremy Coutier. Illustrations, be bon, <laughs> be bon. Just graphics, Clement Dutemarey. I'm butchering these French names. Melanie Andre, got that one, I'm sure of it. Um, fantastic work, people. Great job. 
nice looking stuff. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Light cards, dark cards, I'm assuming light cards are goddess cards, dark cards are titan cards, and I read in the instruction booklet that the little tokens that look like golems are in fact golems, and those are the little guys that you're running through the maze to do stuff. Uh, neat! Very excited to get this to the table, learn how to play, and then to do a how to play. Like I said, I'll probably be playing this um, for the next few days, non-stop, back to back, until I really get a good sense of it, and then I'll be able to do a great how to play video for this and for the base game. So look forward to that coming soon. That was Dice Forge Rebellion uh, unboxing. Thanks so much for watching. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.